Which one next? How'd these get so mixed up? Silas Caldwell, Situation Report for Yana's Base, because apparently some people think the best way to translate a sigil is to sit in front of the breach for hours at a time, doing nothing in particular except grinding away at the translation without pause. I've already combed through the notes I have on hand, and I can't find any cross-reference for the sigil. In fact, the author of this text, who, by the way, is named Ilutisu, or something like, uh, Lucky in English, has provided detailed accounts of other tidbits. We should all normally be very excited to translate, but has the strictest instructions from the current, or I suppose the person who was the current keeper of the way, to absolutely, positively, under no circumstances, open this pilsu or even make an attempt at translating the stone. Oh, I should feel vindicated. I should march right back to Earth, into Beckett's office, and present my findings, along with the most sternly worded message, delivered verbally and in a 50-page memo, that we have what we need. The authors of the text lived here, built the city, used the breaches to go to every godforsaken depth between us and Earth, and also, oh, just a little side note, considered everything they left behind to be so dangerous, they murdered the previous keeper. Oh, yes. And it was voluntary. Look at this. Lucky, who sounds like a child in this portion of the manuscript, has to worry about potentially finding out something about the previous pilsu and being asked politely either to be drawn and quartered, cut into pieces or some such execution, or else to wander off into the woods, which sounds like it's also a certain death sentence. The keeper, before Lucky's tutor, subjected themselves to the hacking to pieces, of their own accord, to prevent any leaking of information. And they fed their remains to the fish in the sea. So there you have it. It's much too dangerous. They're all dead down there, from depth six onward. Lucky doesn't have to worry about actually using their knowledge about being a keeper because nobody in the city wants to leave. This place is perfect. I mean, look at the view. That mountain is gorgeous, imposing, and offering shade from the setting sun. There's a large body of water nearby, which is utterly massive and once hosted a fishing industry. You might have heard me mention the fish just now. And the ruins I've seen... <laughs> at least while sitting here twiddling my thumbs as the rest of the group explores on the outskirts of the city square, keeping me in sight, you know. Look comfortable, spacious, and some are quite ambitiously constructed, like they meant to stay here a long time, just like we'll probably end up doing. <sighs> I'm straying from my point again. The point is... For all intents and purposes, this is the homeworld Beckett's looking for. Is there another one? There was, but it's gone now. Lost forever. No one should go past depth five. Whatever drove the authors away is extinct or lives in the woods, and we definitely shouldn't go out there anyway. Let's study the depths we've got, tell everyone the situation is thoroughly contained, and leave it at that. Only that's not how it's going to go. And you know it. <sighs> well, I'm not going to change it. You going to leave all that in your report? Yes. Maybe I'll even use some hyperbole for the details. Hyper... I might exaggerate. Why not just lie? <sighs> I... I suppose I could. That's what I would do. Cass would too. Hell, I think anyone would if it's all that bad. Yes. Yes, it is. Especially for something like this. Just, just, uh, just be like... Oh my god, this, this sigil means... Emptiness! Death! No air! That's why I couldn't translate it! It's outer space out there, guys! We'll all get sucked into the void! 
Like, like, come on. It's believable. Maybe one of the depth planets blew up or something. Nothing we can do about that. <laughs> oh, it's believable. I've absolutely thought of trying to report something along those lines, but what would it accomplish, truly? Think about it. Beckett will just get some NASA-grade equipment and have a spacewalking in no time. <sighs> I hate that you're right. And then the small but dedicated group of fact-checkers cross-referencing my work will report the fabrication, and then... What the hell? I thought you were the only translator. Oh, I'm the primary translator, yes. But do you think Beckett is foolish enough to let me be the sole source of information about the text? No. I do the brunt of the work, but Beckett runs everything through a few people just to make sure my conclusions make sense and are supported by modern linguistic theory. Damn. It gets us nowhere. And you and I already know Beckett's answer, even if it was true. It's either a wild goose chase for all eternity or more breaches. Huh. Seems that way. I could get used to running around this depth, actually. The climate's perfect. You said the water has fish in it? Let's just go find a good spot, get some fishing done, and call it research, huh? For all I know, that is the best thing we could be doing. Got to beat watching the rest of the team walking around the perimeter and having fun without us. You could join them if you wanted. And let you get more than 30 feet away from any of us? Nah. Cassius has got that group handled if anything happens. I'm staying here to make sure Birdbait doesn't live up to his code name again. I... I thought I was Wormslayer now. Only to Alex. No offense, but I wasn't there to watch you stab that thing. So, I'm gonna chalk it up to luck on your part. You're still good old bird bait to me. <laughs> oh, maybe you're right. Well, thanks for hearing me rant for a bit, all the same. Ah, don't mention it. I don't like dealing with all that hard thinking, but keep me updated. Glad to know it's all snafu. Mm. I'll have to deliver the full translation later. Oh, here they come. You ready for the new team lead to have a scrub in pots and pans, Sai? <laughs> if we're fortunate, we may get to do some of our own sightseeing. Finally. Did our luck? No chance. If you say so. Well, you two look like little rays of sunshine. I'm guessing we haven't made any progress. Is the sky blue? Yep. Except on pandemonium. And we don't know what Deva's sky looks like. But all the others have been blue. Huh. Why is the sky always blue? Rayleigh scattering. Blue light scatters a lot more easily in gaseous atmospheres, so most planets, well, the ones we can breathe on, will have blue skies, unless there's something like sulfur turning the sky yellow like on pandemonium. Oh. Well, aren't you sharp? It's good to have a physicist around sometimes. I'm a lot more useful than a walking thermometer, guys. Not like we even need that. The temperature is perfect. The weather's perfect. Everything is... Perfect. And way too quiet. Yeah, it feels like we walked into a commercial for a vacation rental. But no one's around. No one except the puppets. And I mean no one. No living things except plants. No creatures. No rodents, no birds, no reptiles. Not even bugs. Man, I miss bugs. Big, huggable ones. All right, now, let's not think about it too much, or we're all going to start crying. <sighs> I guess. Well, instead of moping, why don't you two take a look around the city? Maybe inspiration will strike when you least expect. Might not be the only thing striking around here. Of course. Why didn't I think of the raptors that could be lurking around the next corner? Or the giant carnivorous mole that will pop out of the ground and carry you away? Or, what about the- There's nothing out there. If you're that 
worry, just don't go too far and try to remember what's important, hmm? That means you need to get this breach open. We all want to keep Cassius on the team, so let's do our best, all right? All right? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Good. Now run along. Can I go with Jay? I'm not tired yet. I need to walk around some more. Of course you can. Just keep in mind it looks like only a few hours till dark. Watch out for each other. Great son of a bitch, man. What's gotten into her? Jay! What? She's acting weird. All high and mighty and... and ugh. Like Vo used to. Yes, just unbearable. Hm. I'm sure she's just worried about Cassius. We almost lost them, Jay. We couldn't let that happen. I mean, yeah, that's that's why I'm going along with it. But what's with the attitude? I... <laughs> what? You're hiding something? I'm not hiding anything. Okay, you're not telling me the whole story then. That's... Okay, yeah, maybe. I... Just don't oh, know. Oh, come on. Spill the beans. I I can't. Why not? Because. <clears throat> but why are you waving at Silas? I'm not. It's just. <gasps> oh. I get it. Wait, wait, wait. I don't I don't get it. Huh? Hm? Are you talking to me? No, no, you're fine. I'm trying to... Sorry, I'm a bit distracted right now. It's all right, man. Let's just keep walking. Check out this house, Sai. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. See these benches? They look just like the ones from Necropolis, but there's more of them. Do you think this was a workshop? Could be. And look at this! There's some jars on this table. Maybe this was a chemist shop. Or maybe like a pharmacy? <laughs> it's, it's possible. Sorry, Alex. I'm... I know you're trying, but I think I need a minute. I'm going to sit here for a bit. You two can look around. Sigh. Great idea. Let's walk around the building, Alex. But... We'll be in earshot, Sigh. Give him some air. You'll be all right, I promise. Uh, okay, if you're sure. I'm positive. Now what's eating Lizzie? They didn't want to leave. So why did they? I already know the answer. Well, I don't know why. I'm sure I'll find out in the translation soon. But I know they did leave. And whoever stayed behind is dead. Long gone. Probably a rebellion or something like that. Lucky and the rest of their tribe had to make a new breach. This Nabokuto ritual. Yes. Maybe Lucky knows more about that, too. I would be so thrilled to learn more if it was a month ago. Hell, I'd be thrilled if it was a week ago. This riddle that has hung over my head since I got hired for a routine translation job on the verge of being solved. Quite possibly the key to unending worlds. But I don't want to know more. I don't want to learn anything else about these people or, or about these damn depths. Every instinct I possess is screaming at me that we should leave all of this the hell alone. 
Even if we could find our way to the next depth, we shouldn't. But that's not a possibility anyone wants to discuss. Oh, it's just me being gloomy old Silas again. I'm just worried about the prospect of being eaten or dying in some such fashion. No! Si? You okay? <sighs> I'm, I'm all right. Just stubbed my toe. I'm not worried about a simple thing like the death of someone on Alpha Team. Oh no, nothing so inconsequential as that to some people. I'm worried about species extinction. Whatever is on the other side, it's so important that it remains buried under lock and key that the authors, these previous breachers, I don't know what to call them anymore, they put Breach 6 in the middle of the square. Why is that? You could say it's something honorary, or perhaps has religious significance. But that's not what Lucky says. Lucky says it's so they can keep an eye on it night and day, and make sure no one, no one, ever goes inside, under pain of death. They didn't use it anymore. No, they feared it so much, they put it where it was plainly visible to 90% of the town at all times. And we're just going to waltz in. And what am I going to do about it? Nothing, because while I can detach myself somewhat from my own predicament, and while Lizzie is still being very obtuse about everything, she's still right about one thing in particular. Cassius needs me. No one else, just me. That's not a romantic inclination. If I don't figure this out, their position is untenable once again. So it's all on me. Can I even bother stopping to ask questions? Should I be? Is it out of my pay grade? Does Beckett have a stronger handle on this than I think he does? Do I have a handle on anything? I've been warned. These feelings won't stay away forever. Objectively, I know that, but... But... But I need them to stay away for a little bit longer. I, I can't... Right now... Analyze something, Silas, you have wit. I should talk about my current theories regarding the unnamed civilization which emerged from the breaches. Assuming there's a reason Vincula's text is in Akkadian, and they emerged around the time that was the lingua franca of the Bronze Age, then that would explain the condition of the city. Everything, with a few exceptions, looks like it's in an advanced state of decay and disrepair, to the tune of 4,000 years. The houses that remain intact are usually flat stone or clay roofs supported by smooth pillars. The walls are also clay or stone, but more open and airy. And there's occasional brickwork peeking out of the vegetation around things like foundations and what's left of the city streets. The architecture reminds me of sketches I've seen of the Minoan civilization. Perhaps these ancient breachers, for lack of a better term, influenced the cultures they integrated with on Earth. Or maybe everyone just really likes pillars to support heavy stone roofs. I'm not an archaeologist. I mentioned a few exceptions. A few of the structures are collapsed, but otherwise pristine. Those weird puppet creatures maintain a few of them. They pluck weeds and stack fallen bricks, but not very well. They don't seem sentient. They're performing rote functions, but without purpose. Like those jars Alex found, for example. They should have fallen over, degraded, wild animals knocked them over. But there aren't any animals. And even if there were, one of these puppet creatures would come along and clean up the mess. Are they... Are they even alive? Did the ancient breachers have some kind of mechanical skill or... 
or something else. Uh, hello? Alex? Jay? You back? <gasps> Jay! Alex! Hi, Alex? I'll be right there! Wait, what the... What's it doing over here? Sai, are you okay? Yes, yes, it just... It just crept up behind me. What the fuck is it doing here? Playing... Playing a song, I guess. Let's get out of here. Back to the others. <sighs> Good idea. Now what's eating Lizzie? Look, I couldn't explain it in front of Silas. I don't know how he'd react. Oh, what do you mean? Listen, Lizzie's going through a lot right now. We all are. I know, I know. I'm not making excuses for her. But she was having a hard time even before everything. Yeah, I noticed she was keeping her distance. Ugh, if she just talked to us. I agree, but June and I were already trying. June? June loves Lizzie, like all of us. I think me and June are the only two Lizzie talks to about stuff she's feeling. Well, then Cassius, right? Those two get along just fine. Yeah, they used to. <laughs> used to? Lizzie's taken every opportunity to be next to Cassius the whole time. I don't think any of us getting shipped off base would make Lizzie take charge of Alpha Team. Yes, Lizzie has done that. But I don't think Cass feels the same way. Especially not as much as Lizzie does. Or thinks she does. <sighs> oh. Wait, Lizzie's in love? Yes, but not just that. You said Lizzie wouldn't have taken charge for any of us, but Lizzie's desperate to prove herself. She told me so. She feels like everything she's ever done has been doomed to failure, romantic or otherwise. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, I remember that story she told us about. What was her name? McKenna. Yeah, sorry, I uh, couldn't remember. It's um, been a while. It's all right. Really sad. Yeah. So you get it? Kinda. I'm not saying we should feel like Lizzie is suffering more than all of us right now. I know you're still grieving. Me too. Mm hmm But maybe she's been suffering for longer than most. So for my sake, and June's, and Cassius's, we gotta still try to do our best. <sighs> Lizzie has had it pretty rough. All right. I guess I can... No. Silas? Si? You okay? I'm all right. Just stub my toe. Okay. Mother fuck. Everybody just keeps your heart pounding, don't they, Jay? Yes. I can't take my eyes off of them even for a second. <sighs> Jay? Yeah? Thank you. What for? For watching out for us. I know it can't be easy right now. Just, um... <laughs> just doing my job. I know it's a lot more than that. <sighs> I miss him. Me too. I know he'd be proud of you. It's easy enough to say. He was rough sometimes, but he said he was proud, too. You know he did. 
<laughs> yeah, no, he told me to drag you into the breach. What? Yeah. Back at the siege, he said. I don't care what you gotta do, Jay. Get her home. Knock her out. Get her into the breach. Keep her safe. Whatever happens. She's our, uh... She's our baby. He would say something stupid like that. I don't think it's stupid. You mean a lot to us. You mean a lot to me. Jay. I know what you told me that day. I meant every word. I know. Listen to me. Listen to me, Woodsy, okay? I'm listening. You can't... You can't do this all by yourself. It's too much. I have to. No. Listen, you already caused enough trouble back at base. All the back talking? <laughs> I thought you appreciated that. I do, but... You're gonna get in trouble, down here or up there. You have to make it out of here, too. That doesn't matter. It does. It does to me. You hear me? I hear you. Promise me. Promise you what? You have to make it out of here, too. You're not... You're not gonna stick your foot in your mouth, or you're not gonna go sacrificing yourself. You hear me? Not for me. Not for anyone else. I, I can't promise that. You have to. Look at me, please. Promise me. Uh, uh, I... I can't. Please? Jay! Alex! What? What now? Silas? We'll be right there! Azratu. Our heaven. That's what the rulers have called this place. Kanamu says that our rulers may have their heads in the heavens, but it is not a good name for this place. Kanamu says Azratu still needs building, still needs sowing and reaping, and still, most important of all, we still die. That is no place that can be called heaven. I say that Kanamu is like a worm, whose belly continually drags upon the earth. They will not let their spirits be raised, no matter the circumstances. I have kinder things to say about this world. O oh, mountain of insolence, raised up on the one side of us on high, how alike are we? You stand against the gods above, and still, your forests are bountiful with game, and your caverns rich with copper and tin and iron. Azratu is a good name for this place, I, Ilutisu, say. For if we are to reach heaven, it will be by making it ourselves, the work of our own hands and our own minds. Kanamu laughs and laughs. Fine words, they say, for one who has not done a day's labor on my own. I say Kanamu is like a worm again, only this time because he is unpleasant to my sight and may best be suited for life on a hook as bait for fish. But Kanamu is right. The... The beasts do all our labor for us, as is decreed by the rulers and carried out by the clever, and Kanamu among them. They say it is our way of life, that I am foolish to think it should be any other way. I have been dreaming of fish, great fanged fish, eyes as large as the plates upon which my dinner sits, devouring me whole. For so it was with the keeper of the way two steps before me. They led us out of darkness, away from that abominable place we shall go no longer. And their reward was a swift death and a place at the bottom of the water. 
Even their name shall not be recorded, lest we remember some small part of their memory, and in so doing, find the key to open the way that shall never be opened again. And so, I waste my days studying for a task I hope not to do, that no one desires for me to do, but that we may all wish for me to do should the time come. I pray that time never comes. I long for purpose and a labor that will guide my life, but if that task is to dream away the hours of the day, plucking fruit I have not planted from outstretched hands, and dancing to tunes I did not perform with lyrics I did not write, then that is how it shall be. For the sake of the peace of all our people, all the days of our lives, as long as we all shall live, now and forevermore. <sighs> Alas, I return to this writing, Full of despair. Peace was not our fate. The Hamal. Um. Hello? Who? Hey. Ah! ah! Shh! 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 For God's sake, Cassie, you scared the crap out of me! <laughs> Even with one eye open, I still got the stealth moves. <sighs> what are you doing up? Oh. You want me to leave? No, no. Thought so. Aren't you supposed to be resting? Yeah, but I couldn't sleep. And Jane needs it more than me. So I took a spot. Oh. And now I'm going to keep watch and chat with my crush yet. Cass. Mm-hmm. I've missed you. <laughs> what do you mean? I've been right here. You know what I... <sighs> I missed you too. Bird bait. Ugh, not you too. Oh, I'm sorry. Great and mighty worm slayer. <laughs> Somehow that's worse. Probably because it's coming from you. Fine. Bird bait it is didn't say I hated it. Too late. <laughs> Damn. What you working on? More translating? <sighs> yes. More bad news? Yes. I could tell. That scowl is a mile wide. Of course it is. Let me just skip over all the warnings about never ever going back through this breach so I can find the way we can get through this breach. Seems logical and safe to me. We're well past the point of being logical or safe. Have been for a while. <sighs> so, how have you been? <laughs> you keep talking like we haven't seen each other. Sure seems that way. Lizzie's done her damnedest to keep us apart. I don't think that's really the case. Isn't it? Besides, we've only been here like two days. One and a half tops. So why am I stuck here without you most of the day? Probably because my job is to catalog wildlife, and your job is to translate the sigil, Sai. But... but that's... Not fair. Doesn't feel very fair, personally. Even though I know you're right. Silas... I'm sure Lizzie thinks she's doing us all a favor. You heard the crazy promise she made to Beckett. She has to make good on it somehow. Yes, but... And it's all for my sake. Do I even need to tell you how I feel about that? I'd like to hear, actually. Maybe you can gripe instead of me. It was very sweet when you think about it. But I hate it. I hate feeling like I owe somebody, or like I couldn't do it on my own. I fucked up, and now- You didn't! I wish you'd stop saying that. Well, even if you don't believe it, others do. Enough of them that I lost my place, and almost lost a whole lot more. 
but I know why Lizzie took over. She's just trying to help. So I've just been going along with what she tells me to do. Maybe we will see an end to this whole mess and we can at least make one wish come true. Let the rest of us make it out alive. I... I have to make sure. I can do that one tiny small thing for everyone. That's not a small job. It's the least I should be able to do. That's not true, Cass. It's not true. Well, I'm not going to let anything stop me. Are you? I won't let anything stop me either. Good. I'm still here for you. You... You fucker. What? I came over here to say that to you. You need the support right now, not me. I can go cry in a corner later. Like we promised. Right? <sighs> like we promised. But... I don't know how you can help me. Not right now, at least. I I'm just being honest. There's nothing to do except... Keep trudging through this journal and hope I find some spark of inspiration. Hmm. Need a break? Maybe. Well, why? Come look at the stars with me. The view's better over here. Oh. Okay. Leave the recorder. Uh, oh. Oh. All right. Oh, my God. I feel like punching myself in the face a lot, but never more than now. It was just getting interesting, too. Goodness gracious, it's early even for this old lady. Who's there? It's me, Evelyn. I have an update about Alpha, June. Did you hear me? Whoa! That was fast. I'm ready. Let's make some coffee. Certainly. You're sure the walk-in is still safe for us? <sighs> Evelyn, nothing comes in here without my say-so. Now, what'd you find out? I assume you didn't wake me up at three in the morning just to check on the fridge. Indeed not. As I said, I've got an update. Since you hit the recorder last time, I thought I should try to do so this time. Beckett was debriefing one of the other Breacher teams when we suddenly received a message from Upsilon. Listen. That makes another three shipments from Gaia. However, the quotas are going up. We still need to hasten our production. Any luck with the cultivation process? I'm afraid not. The specimens the labs are requesting are stubborn. And we're having trouble growing them with any degree of success. I see. Then I suppose your efforts have been focused into protecting our mining equipment on Pandemonium. I don't have anything to report on that front either, but... Nothing, Moss? Is that what I'm hearing? You keep pestering me with reports, and you think I don't notice you're not giving me any results while you try and gently remind me that Echo Team can take over for Alpha. Why should I? Then you can't even handle growing some fungus. We're working on it. We'll have something to report soon. My team can handle it. Good. I'm keeping a close eye on Alpha myself. I don't need you to do that for me. Should they prove incapable of exploring at the pace we require, you'll hear from me directly. Until then, the next time I hear from you should be a lot more... fruitful. Yes, sir. Dismissed. Director Beckett! Report from Alpha Team! They found Breach 6! Already? Good. Very good. I've also got this report here from the Team Linguist. I'll look at it later. You know the drill. Dispatch the necessary link stone immediately. Make sure the other teams have their stones refreshed. There should be no delays. I don't want to hear about more natural breach closings fouling up the supply network. Yes, sir. 
I should replace the damn biologist sooner. What's the same? Mm-hmm. Mm. Hmm. Located breach six, no immediate translation. Strongly advise and may be necessary to leave breach six closed and nothing useful. Mix Fox, please inform Mr. Richardson's team that Breach 6 has been located. I can deliver a full report within the hour if he so desires. Oh dear. Uh, sounds like they're still alright. I spoke with Upsilon. There have been no casualty reports. It pays to stay in good standing with them. They supply the rest of the Breacher teams with all of their needs. What about Echo? Are they really trying to get Alpha pulled away? Not just Echo. Most of the teams feel Alpha could be replaced, or have new members added. Beckett has blocked all of their attempts. Even for new members? Why? I don't know. All I know is, Alpha's only options are either getting pulled out entirely, or they get it done with the members they have. Poor things. And we can't let them stop because of Cassius. Indeed. Alpha would be better off exploring one of the safer breaches, especially given Cassius's eye injury. Alas, their only value to Beckett is either as a trade to Nicholas Thatcher for funding, or as a miracle breach finder and opener. Why do Beckett and Richardson need all this money anyway? Isn't Vincula doing just fine out there? More than fine, last time I checked. Booming, in fact. I did find one curious bit of news from the company side. What's that? It seems Mr. Richardson hasn't made a public appearance for a few weeks now. Highly unusual, especially given the latest advancements Vincula has made. Out of the blue. Out of the breach, you mean? Exactly. So Richardson is only talking to Beckett these days? So it seems. I wonder why. What do you know about Richardson? (sighs) Not much, I'm afraid. You... you're his secretary, for heaven's sake, Evelyn. I'm supposed to be, but... I don't know, June. I don't have an explanation either. As far as my memory is concerned, this is how things have always been. I ran around the world getting things done for Richardson. I talked to him on the phone, and that's about it. Haven't even done that since coming to Yanis. Land's sake. Well, we've got to find out just what he's after. More money, probably. He's got that. If he wanted more, he'd be having farms put up on Gaia or whatnot. But the only thing he tells Beckett is, keep going, keep going. Hmm. Maybe he's just trying to live up to the Vincula slogan. Going further for you, and all. This all smells fishy to me. That rascal is up to something else. Do we even know how old he is? What kind of person he is? Goals he might have? Anything? He did appear in public before now. As for age, my guess would be 50s, maybe early 60s. Otherwise, he lives reclusively by choice. If I recall, he immigrated from Europe at a young age and started Vincula in the late 80s. Since then, he's used the company to invest in pharmaceuticals and medical technology. That's all public knowledge. Well, it's high time we shed some more light on him. Evelyn, you keep an eye on Beckett's schedule and let me know the next time he's got a call with Richardson. I'll be there in the blink of an eye. I'll do that. So, do we trust each other yet? If you'd stop asking me, I might get around to it. Hmm? Evelyn... June? Trust is a strong word, but if it's a friend you're after, you'll have all the help I can offer for your situation. Just help me do anything I can to get the rest of my family home. You hear me? I... I understand. Do you promise? Promise? They're like my own kids, Evelyn. Good lord knows I was happy for a season, but... Now, the best thing I can do is make sure we get him out alive. I owe it to Greg, and I'll owe you if you help me. So promise me. I... I promise, June. I'll do everything I can. 
Thank you. Now, let an old lady get back to bed. Those biscuits can wait another hour at least. It's my biscuits that need all the rest they can get. This is Elizabeth Bellinger, update for Yana Space. While we wait for Silas to make any progress on the Linkstone sigil, I've opted to collect as many specimens as possible and have them ready for testing when the Linkstone gets here in a few days. Only trouble is, there's not many specimens around. We've already grabbed a few plant specimens. It's not going to be a plant. And we've managed to find a few odds and ends. Some mysterious liquids in jars, a few scraps of fabric, and some metal tools. We've stored what we found at the Breach 6 campsite that should keep it away from the local things. Which brings me to my next point. Cassius, what do we know about these strange creatures wandering around the city, if they are creatures at all? Not a single fucking thing. That is, unfortunately, correct. Could we get a rundown on that? Yeah. Of course. We don't know anything. Let me tell you why. The morphology is all over the damn place. What do I mean? I mean that they look like anything and everything. We've got fur. We've got no fur. We've got walks upright on two legs. Four legs. No arms. Arms, but no legs. Crawls around the walls and ceilings instead of walking. Some of them are vaguely humanoid. Some of them aren't like anything I've ever seen before. And I've lived through four depths. Four! And this shit is wild. Uh, yes, Cassius. Now, please. Do they have a common ancestor? Fuck if I know. If they did, they shouldn't look so different. And yet, they all have one thing in common. They all go around doing chores for this city. Some of them have long tails that sweep the floors. Some of them play music like the hairless humanoid looking one we saw when we walked in. Some of them just walk around inside the houses picking up things that have fallen over. It's so purposeful. But why? Are they a domesticated species left on their own? Are they biological at all? I tried to get close to one and touch it, and it growled at me. So I left it alone. It had four eyes, one on each appendage. Four eyes! And I've only got one now, and some have none. What? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? As you've heard, the local fauna, if fauna it is, defies our expectations for a biological summary. Our research in that area is ongoing, just like our translation efforts. Hopefully, we'll have more to report soon. Until then, this is Alpha Team, third day of exploration on Depth 5. Are we sure this is a good idea? Absolutely not. It's a good idea because it's one of our only ideas. We could try and check out the forest on the edge of town. That's a long way off. And while I'd be thrilled to go on a day trip to the woods with you, Cassius, I want to be sure we've checked everywhere we can nearby. It's probably just another workshop. We've already got a number of tools. Still, I'm going to be thorough. This house is all boarded up from the outside. We'll pry it open and see what's in there. If you're sure. Give me a hand, Alex. No point in arguing about it anymore. One. Two. And three. We should be able to squeeze in there without damaging anything else. Why would they board it up from the outside like that? Usually to keep curious people away. Could be loose materials inside, maybe it's disused or in bad shape. Or it could be the plague. Or the house of a heretic or a rebel. Who knows? You're supposed to know. But that's not happening much these days, is it? Just more doom and gloom. Follow me and keep your eyes open. How am I supposed to... <sighs> Come on, Alex. Watch your step. Lizzie, we're coming! Could be something exciting inside. Like the table from Necropolis. I doubt it. Come on. Let's have a look. And then it's back to sightseeing. Here. 
Thanks. See anything? I'm supposed to ask you that, dumbass. Oh, uh, right. Just a few benches over here. They're all knocked over. A couple of glass jars. Um, empty or broken. Looks like some uh, knives, I think. Sharp metal tools. Nothing else. Hey, there's a staircase over here. I'm going up. Lizzie, please wait up. She's gonna find trouble if she keeps running around like this. What do you think could be up here? Cassius. What? I'm not a fortune teller. I don't have the vaguest idea. It could be a watchtower. It could be a domicile. It could be another damned workshop or what's left of one. I don't know. All right, all right. Quit being crabby with me. Long way up. Or it feels like it. Another stairway without a guardrail. Do they just like the thrill of heights? I think it's more likely anything they used has worn away. Maybe they had a rope or something? But that wouldn't last as long. Looks like they've used metal elsewhere. Could have uh, made one that would last. Maybe they didn't need it. Maybe they crawled up the stairs with sticky limbs. Who knows anymore? Any kind of anatomy is up for grabs. <sighs> Terrifying. Lizzie? Uh, what'd you find? Not what I was expecting, that's for sure. Come up here and see. Yeah, this is a new one. There's tables and chairs and silverware? It's a dining area? That's what it looks like. And candlesticks, too. Fancy. There's no food, though. I'm sure that's all long rotted away. One of the puppets probably maintains the condition of these pieces. Clearly there's no food here, because the main course has just arrived! <laughs> Jay. Uh, what? Am I too funny? <sighs> yeah, that was a good one. Keep dreaming, buddy. The view is great, but nothing else to do up here. I'm gonna grab a plate and then we can get out of here. What the, what the hell? What the fuck is that? Get back! Get back! Back off, fucker! Ouch. I need light! Watch your Get out of here! Go! Get! Run! Is it chasing us? Eyes up front! You have to lead me down! Okay, okay! I don't see it! Don't stop moving! We need to leave! Come on, Jay! Hurry! I I've got a light! Watch your step! Oh, what the hell is that thing? I don't know, but it's got a weapon! That's all that matters! We made it! Where's the exit? Follow the light! I don't see any light! It's still daylight outside! You should see it! I don't see any light! Ah, uh, me neither, um... Ugh, fuck, where'd it go? Fucking hell, come on! It should be on the opposite side of this room. Everyone with me? Uh, I'm here! I'll stay behind everyone, just find the way out! The door! It's been barricaded! Oh my gods! How? Something must have repaired it. Force it open! We're trying. It threw something down here. Maybe you can't see us yet. Turn your lights off. Now stay quiet and keep working on that door. I'll keep an eye out. Roger. It's across the room. How's the door coming? I've got a board done. Try not to make any noise. I'm setting it down very gently. It's attacking the benches. You need to hurry up. We're trying. So dark. Musician. It's on the roof. It's gone! Let's break this open. Come on, Alex. Ready? Ready! Uh, everyone out! Oh, fuck. 
All right, fuck that. Let's get back to camp before it fucking decides to do anything else. Should we block the door again? <sighs> Whatever fixed it, we'll fix it again. Look! Yeah, let's just leave it before we piss it off again. The musician. It, it saved us, but... But why? Why are there always more questions? Syntax is a podcast by Twin Strangers Productions and is licensed under an attribution share alike 4.0 international license. Today's episode was directed and produced by Stella Rowan Odom and written by Ty Vaughn. Silas Caldwell is played by Ty Vaughn. Cassius Thatcher is played by Beth Sage Fong. Elizabeth Bellinger is played by Morgie B. Alex Yard is played by Jules Christine. June Dawson is played by Renee Helsel. Jeremiah Woods is played by Elgin Smith. Miss Evelyn Vo is played by Kyla Crockett. Steve Beckett is played by Joe Cliff Thompson. Additional voices provided by Saf the Something, Stella Rowan Odom, M. Mulder. Find out more about the show on syntaxpodcast.com. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this episode, rate us on your favorite listening platform. It helps us out tremendously. Know the depths. Wish for more. Special thanks to our Indiegogo backers who supported us this season. Micah Carmichael. Jen Shabel. Jamie Henderson. Leanne Egan. Flo. Audrey Feltner, Fox, Katrina Rogers, Jose Sanchez, Johan Kingsley, Kit Hardig. This show was made on the Twin Strangers Productions Network. You can support the creation of new and ongoing audio dramas by subscribing to our Patreon. Visit our website to find the latest news and updates about other shows at twinstrangersproductions.com.